Welcome to Rap Geek. Thanks for stopping by to get the latest and the greatest trending news. If this is your first time, you're invited to hit that subscribe and the notification bell. That way you can get all the trending info as soon as it drops. Let's dive into some conversation. Following Lil Durk's arrest, many have been eager to hear from Quando Rondo. The day after he was taken into custody, Rondo dropped a new song called Life Goes On, which arrived alongside a cinematic music video. The emotional track pays tribute to Lil Pab and other late loved ones. At the time, Quando Rondo had yet to issue a statement in response to Dirk's arrest. Now, however, he's taken to Instagram with a lengthy post about forgiveness. He doesn't mention Dirk by name, but it appears to be a response to his ongoing legal issues. Man, we didn't get into this music industry to just make it, just to stay caught up in this street-ish. His message begins. We all have families and communities counting on us. It's time to leave all that behind. We've already lost so much, and it's heavy on my heart to forgive anyone I had issues with in the past. It's all love for me, praying for everyone. Life goes on. Reportedly, Lil Durk faces life imprisonment or the death penalty if found guilty of murder for hire. Last week, Lil Durk was arrested in Broward County, Florida for alleged murder for hire. Reportedly, the Chicago rapper was booked into a Miami prison yesterday to await transport to Los Angeles. His arrest took place just hours after five alleged OTF affiliates were taken into custody on similar charges. Authorities believe they were allegedly hired to carry out the murder of Quando Rondo in retaliation for King Vaughn's 2020 death. In 2022, Quando Rondo and his cousin Lil Pab were at a Los Angeles gas station where their vehicle was shot up. Rondo was unscathed, but Lil Pab passed away as a result of his injuries. WAC 100 has a very interesting perspective on these allegations. The hip hop media world continues to react and speculate about the federal arrest of Lil Durk for alleged murder for hire conspiracy. Most recently, WAC 100 and DJ Vlad hopped on Vlad TV for yet another interview, and they discussed this matter and their many moving parts. Right now, we won't discuss the details around their conversation, given the unfounded allegations and presumptions. But what we are going to do, check out this hearing beyond the summary and check out how WAC 100 connected the alleged dots between the alleged informants and OTF and how multiple associate statements led to the alleged murder for hire. Let's check it out. Five other OTF members were arrested. Uh, Kavon London Grant, DeAndre Dontrell Wilson, Keith Jones, David Brian Lindsay, and Asa Houston. Yeah. Uh, they're charged with conspiracy to commit murder for hire, committing murder for hire resulting in death, use of carry and discharge of firearms, and a machine gun in the furtherance of a crime of violence resulting in death. Probably a switch. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Extremely serious charges that might actually carry the death penalty. And they said that the OTF credit cards was used to book flights uh, as well as rental cars. Right? Right. Uh, according to the indictment, multiple individuals tied to OTF coordinated the plot and discussed payments after the alleged attempt on Kwando's life. The plan allegedly involved offering music industry opportunities and cash rewards in exchange for the killing of Kwando. On the same day, OTF associated credit cards reportedly used to book flights with several individuals involved to return to Chicago. Now, how would they know that, here goes the problem, there's a couple problems here. How would they know that uh, music contracts was offered? Who would have to tell them that? Well, prosecutors state that these transactions and the informant's recordings played key roles in linking Little Dirk to the murder for hire plan. There's a guy named OTF Jam. That was wired. Very ironic name. Jam now got he him put in everyone jam. in the jam. He had 12 years. 12 got years. Got out, interviewed, said he kept it real, brought him cars, gave him 50,000. Right. This, this, this. Uh, May mention that ain't no smut on his name. He ain't never been a rat. Mm. Caught a gun case. But eventually he, he flipped. Yep. He got put in the jam, and, and now he's... Right. OTF Jam did 12 years for attempted murder back, uh, I guess, around 2010. He got out in 2022. 
right around the same time of the Kwando situation. And he allegedly had been wearing a wire for the last two years. From 22 to 24. Yeah. So he immediately got caught up? Yes. That's what it sounds like. And of course, what they're saying is, this is retaliation for the killing of King Vaughn by Quando Rondo's right-hand man, Lil' Tim. Slow down. The killing that happened at the Beverly Center is retaliation. That what killing at the Beverly Center? That, that's where the last murder happened. Of this who? This murder happened at the Beverly Center across the street. Oh, Lil' Pop. Yeah. No, I understand that, but the Lil' Pop murder, which was supposed to be the Quando Rondo murder, mm -hmm. was in retaliation to King Von getting killed. For that. Okay. Yeah, that's what uh, I'm saying. Yeah, the first, who's the first one to get mentioned today? What do you mean? One of your guests. We all thought that was a bad drug deal, weed deal. You know that. The world thought that that shooting was a bad weed deal between some Armenians or Persians. That's what the world thought. Huh. Okay. And it wasn't until February of 2023 that Brick Baby goes on the internet with Flacco and says, out of nowhere, the world is oblivious to this. We've tied this to a bad drug deal. Remember the story that an arm reached over Kwando and shot him? Hmm. That was the story, right? Brick Baby goes on the show and says, I guess they can't say OTF didn't slide for King Von anymore. Mm. And, and Flacco says, well, what are you talking about? He said, yeah, the shoot, they slid for King Von, OTF. Yeah. Now, that's February. March, the feds get on brick. We don't know this. Jump to June 2023. Feds come to Brick Baby's house. We get the report. I'm screaming, Brick Baby just got picked up by the feds. What's happening? When your court date, right? We're under the presumption that it's an AK-47 case. But what really happened was they came there to get his cell phone. In the process of him doing the search, they come across the AK-47. Brick Baby calls 600, who's part of the exposures, one of my guys. Say, man, the feds just picked me up. I got an AK case, but they on the other fella. We're going to refrain from his name because I know that's your friend, right? Hey, Wack makes some good points. For those unaware, there are rumors circulating from alleged court documents that claim that there was an informant within OTF that provided information to the federal government over the course of two years. This individual reportedly served roughly 12 years in prison and then got out. While these reports cite court documents, more could still emerge that would prove or disprove this statement. But either way, federal authorities have arrested five other alleged OTF members who allegedly tried to carry out a hit on Quando Rondo with funds from Lil Dirk. Per prosecutors' accusations. A 2022 shooting in Quando Rondo's vicinity took the life of his cousin Lil Pop. And this is the murder that federal authorities are now investigating concerning Lil Dirk. Recently, Rondo seemed to address Dirk's arrest via Instagram. Although he didn't mention him by name, it was a call to promote forgiveness and move past the street conflicts that have caused so much pain and suffering. The news comes as fans are looking back at Lil Durk's past and seeing conversations about street life under a different context. However, it's important to note that we still haven't seen a trial, so these are all allegations at the end of the day. For example, social media brought up an old clip of Wallow advising Chicago rapper to forgive his loved one's killers and make it out of his situation. Fans connected this to how the alleged hit on Quando Rondo was supposedly in retaliation for the red rum of King Vaughn. Juvenile was previously 
very angry at the NFL for not picking Lil Wayne as the next Super Bowl halftime performer, a spot that Kendrick Lamar got. But it seems like he's down to join forces to make things right in his eyes. Moreover, the Cash Money alum and his label mate, Manny Fresh, recently stopped by Powers 106's Brown Bag Mornings program, during which they discuss Super Bowl 50 Noya, which is Super Bowl 59 in New Orleans next February. But of course, you probably know all the discourse around the halftime show pick, the hometown snub, the Drake beef, young money loyalty, etc. However, they think it could be a huge moment. But let's check out what Manny Fresh and Juvenile actually has to say on 106's Brown Bag Mornings program. Here we go. New Orleans mm-hmm. uh, this upcoming year in yeah, February, yeah, right? Yeah. What if Kendrick makes the call and says, I need Juvenile and Manny Fresh to come and perform? Oh, we there. We, look, Kendrick yeah. is one of the best performers we, you know, we've ever seen. Yeah. Like, he's he top notch, especially in hip hop. In the hip hop world, he raises the bar. So it's something that everybody want to see. And if he calls, I'm there. Yeah. No, no problem. The thing Definitely is, you there. know, the internet always makes uh, makes something that, that yeah. is not. They yeah. want to make everything so yeah. yeah. black and white like and we, we took a side because we said that it would be cool if Wayne was in it. Of course we going to say that. That's, mm-hmm. that's I feel like we all wanted team. that too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, that's, yeah. From, that's our team. But yeah, but respectfully, Kendrick is, you know, he's that dude. Yeah. yeah he's never, that dude. Never throwing shade on Kendrick not one time yeah. because I mean, that's just, I, I feel like I, I don't, I don't live my life like that anyway. I don't like to tell somebody else down and put somebody else in a position. Yeah. Right? yeah. But I feel like Wayne was campaigning for that spot. You know, yeah. like he, was, he came out, you know, you know what I'm saying? He came yeah. out months ahead of time. I'm like, well, look, if he asking mm-hmm. for it. You know, at least consider him, a, a, you know, give him a call or something. Absolutely. But to, to Manny's point, it's the, the way the Internet works. I feel like it worked against our favor this time in a way because it was it became somehow some way Kendrick versus Lil Wayne. Yeah, exactly. And it's that. like, bro, it was never if you it's know never anything about Kendrick, his very beginning songs, his whole style was mimicked by Wayne. He said it himself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, he's a big influence. Big and man. I'm sure he has so much love and respect for him to this day. Um, and so for him... Man, it would be legendary, but will that really manifest when Young Money and Drake's entourage probably don't want anything to do with Kendrick Lamar at this point? Maybe, maybe not. Despite the mixed reactions to the NFL selection, everyone is still very curious as to what will go down in New Orleans on February the 9th, 2025. Many hip hop fans would love to see cash money represented on stage, even if it seems unlikely. But let's cross our fingers and see what comes next. Man, I'm hoping to see Master P just do that one song. How you do that there, New Orleans Baton Rouge? How you do that there? Man, that'll be fire. But we're on to the next story. Joe Budden reacts to TDE Punch calling out hip-hop media after Kendrick Lamar's SZA interview. Let's dive into the conversation. Joe Budden is calling super cap on TDE Punch's claims. Recently, Kendrick Lamar sat down with SZA for Harper's Bazaar, and the interview has since earned mixed reactions amid criticism. TDE Punch hopped on Twitter X. Twitter fingers on fire to share his take, arguing that hip hop media might be the whole problem. It's okay to criticize the critics, he asks, because ultimately we're just talking about opinions, right? Well, my opinion, I'm a critic, is we're losing perspective on things. Something great or not so great happens. Then we talk about it. And that's fine again. This is just my opinion today. It might change later. So wait for something great to happen. Sleep on it, study it, and find something insightful to say about it. I respect hip hop journalism. I feel it's needed in its truest form. It helps keep the culture alive, he continued. But it's only a few real ones left. Man, most of you guys are garbage. That's just my opinion. That's why artists don't want to talk to you, he said. During a recent episode of the Joe Budden podcast, however, Joe Budden called super cap on Punch's claims. According to him, there were far too many options for this to have been a reasonable excuse. While he acknowledges that some hip hop outlets, hey, can be weird. He says it would be nice if an artist like Kendrick Lamar had chosen one for his big interview. But let's check out what Joe Budden actually has to say up close and personal, verbatim. Here we go. Demix theorizes Lil Durk will face a big indictment over the 
over other alleged crimes. Let's dive into the conversation. Lil Durk was arrested for allegedly conspiring to commit murder for hire. DJ Academics has spoken at length about the recent arrest of Lil Durk for allegedly orchestrating an attempt murder of rival rapper Quando Rondo in 2022. In doing so, he theorized that the feds are planning a bigger indictment are planning a bigger indictment against the rapper during a recent live stream. Federal prosecutors unveiled their complaint against Dirk on Friday, alleging that the that only the family is a hybrid organization that also functions as a criminal gang in addition to a music collective. Banks Lil Dirk put a put a monetary bounty out for an individual with whom Banks was feuding, named TB. The filing reads, referencing, referencing, referencing Rondo's initials. Bank, Banks ordered TB's murder and that the hitman, and that the hitman used Banks, used Banks and OTF related finances to carry out the murder. They further allege that it was in reality they further allege that it was in retaliation for the 2020 killing of King Vaughn. As for academics response, well, hey, let's give academics a chance to respond. Here we go. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, like, any time that you get an opening, now he, granted, he let that shit go. Let's say he let that shit go. And the devil knocked on his door one morning like, boy, I know where he at. Hmm. He only has so much time to react. If it, if it's true, he only has so much time. Should I give him a pass or no? See, nigga, that's the first time you didn't hear. You know where he at, and it ain't no show. It ain't no hundred people around. It ain't no. You know what I mean? Hey, hey, that's like a gut check time, right? Where like people probably looking at you to see if like you are who you probably says you exactly. are. Exactly. Exactly. Like nigga. Do you sit or do you stand when you piss, nigga? Like in the streets, that like like as a man, you look at it different. But in the streets, I know how we looking at it. But like as a civilian and a man, it's like shit. You know what I mean? You wouldn't let that shit go a little bit. You know what I mean? Do, do, do you believe that also? Like you see, Dirk had, you know, Dirk had some of the lyrics that people love. Be like, yo. If you can't get the main, the main nigga, you better get his mans or whatever it is. You get what I mean? And you know, D Dirk basically now he talked that talk pretty good. Do, do you do you believe that there's a possibility that maybe like man, that's more even more pressure because everybody around you is like, nigga, we know what you rap about. This gonna be if we know what you stand about. And, and, and how do you and how could you say no? And can you say no, basically saying, yo, bro, I'm in a position, I can't do that right now. Yeah. How does that work? Yeah, that's what I'm like. I, I just, I mean, of course he did not do it. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. I, he didn't do it. But yeah, yeah, no, I can see. Yeah, yeah we're I trying to extrapolate off of Dirk. I, I can see myself facing that yeah. same situation. How, what would you do? I can see myself facing that same situation. They have to make a hard decision, bro. And I don't know if I would have made the right decision. Knowing, you get what I'm saying? I don't know. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't know if I would have made the right decision. The same decision. You know what I'm saying? Like, because it's just like the hurt. That, like, you got to think somebody's scoring if it's true. Hmm. Yeah. But I feel like he was, uh, hopefully, I feel like, Hopefully that they got him fucked up and this it wasn't no wiretap or nothing and they just like you know what I mean putting his name in the middle of that shit and you know what I mean yeah, I, think the, I think the feds is a scary scary place I'm gonna be honest with you there's a, there's a thought of mine there's a thought of mine that says when the feds unseal this indictment they're gonna have every attempt on Quando Rondo's life. Which there was supposedly like three or four before. They might have. Oh, F man. They might have FBG cash. They might have other situations. They might bring that that Atlanta joint back that he was co-defendants with Vaughn. 
I don't Wait, know. this is the it, it, the indictment still still. What, what, you got to remember, they gave a complaint. The complaint is more to lock him up. The complaint doesn't have the info on what they believe Dirk did. Right, like, like it says certain shit, but, but uh, you're right, you're right, you're so, right, because that, that, because that paperwork, I never been to the fans, so I just didn't know they format of how they, how they do paperwork, because I was looking for like the statements and the interrogations, no, no, and all so, that. You know, so like, the indictment that was just the warrant. Yeah, so the indictment has it. So, so once again, I, 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 I'll tell y'all what a, a so uh, the easiest way for me to explain to you is this, right? Yo, if you driving right now in Cali, um, they pull you over. I don't, I don't know if, um, well, we, we, we isn't legal, but, but say whatever. They look in the back seat. They see something that resembles a gun, right? Weapons are pretty much legal. Um, say they run your file. They know you don't got no concealed carry. They're going to say, I got probable cause to go search the car. Or even say, or say, or say they, they know something is up and they bring a, a dog sniffer to sniff the car. They, they feel like yeah, they something's there, the weed. right? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and let's say it's coke. Let's say it's coke. All right. Now they search the car. There's coke there. That's a heavy charge. They don't need to grand jury you. What happens is that how you get charged is that that cop does a complaint. And that complaint gets picked up by the DA as a felony. They, they, they go beyond. They, they actually skip the grand jury. Now for yeah. now for things like murder and stuff like that, even if there's a complaint, they'll lock you up. They, but, but just cross their T's and dot their I's, they'll send it back to a grand jury or have a grand jury do it. But in for regular shit with cops, not in federal court, a cop doing a complaint is how you get arrested for ninety five percent of the things. Yeah. In federal court. Federal court don't have a bunch of DEA. Like, if you running around and you met, like, a DEA agent, an FBI agent, you're doing something wrong. You're not going to see these people. Like, they they don't have even the resources just to be at every stop sign or on every road. So, what they so do is... Go ahead. Yeah, so, what they do is they do investigations. And when they do investigations, they bring it to a grand jury without you even knowing. So, the, the, the majority of how... Federally, you get indicted is through a grand jury. The reason why they locked up Dirk through a complaint, which usually some state shit, or like how states do it, where a cop pulls you over and you know he smells some stuff or he sees something and then he locks you up. The reason why the feds did it is because they thought Dirk was gonna run. So the mere fact they locked him up is because they know they're cooking up a grand jury indictment. And that indictment, I think, is not only going to have this murder for hire, it's going to be a superseding indictment. It might be racketeering, or it might have other murders and other attempted murders. And that's going to be the big bang. So, like, in a week or two weeks from now, I don't know how long it's going to take for them to get a Cali. When that indictment is on seal, we're going to see some shit we've never seen before. They're going to link him to shit. Trust me, that's going to be the big one. Because right now, th this was just to get him locked up. They ain't tell everything they really think he did. His mama. Hey, that's a great take on this whole situation. It's a pretty scary time for Dirk. But we're on to the next story. The baby is trying to stay out of drama. During his recent appearance on Drink Champs, the baby was asked to pick between Megan Thee Stallion and Glorilla and ultimately decided both. The rapper explained that despite his past issues with Meg, he'd be open to working with her in the future and thinks her How I Look collaborator might be the perfect addition. I got love for Meg, he said at the time. Me and Meg did some dope ish together and it's good to see her rise amongst the obstacles. I'm manifesting a song with Glow and Meg together. I think that's why me and Meg should pop back out. Because I feel like ain't none of these ninjas and no disrespect that y'all are making music with can really embody that. Alrighty, let's give Nori a couple ticks to shoot some questions at the baby concerning Megan the Stallion and Glorilla and possibly working on some new music. Here we go. I, I wanna take this one. Go ahead. Megan or go Glorilla? Yeah, Glow. Get a glow? 
Yeah, matter of fact, hold on. I'm gonna do both. Shout out to Mayor Gang. <laughs> Where we at, Jamie? You been doing that already? Yeah. I'm gonna do both. How you doing, good brother? Yeah, I'm a that's good that's nigga, that's man. That's I got love for Meg. Me and Meg did some dope shit together, man. You yeah, know, and yeah, it's good I to see her rise, rise about that. amongst hold the hold obstacles. Hold on, hold on. You dig what I'm saying? So we gonna do both. But I fuck with Glow. Glow, me and you, we overdo Glow. You bullshit. Give him a little shout out if you want to. You know what I'm manifesting? I'm manifesting a song with uh Glow? With Glow and Meg together. And baby, I think that's the way me and Meg should pop. Back out, see y'all got me drinking and shit. Ooh. I think that's the way me and Meg should pop back out because well, hold on, hold on, you know, hold on. I feel like ain't none of these niggas and no okay, disrespect okay, okay, okay. that y'all making music with Ooh. can really embody that and bring this. Ain't, this that's, ain't mine. No, that's if you want to try it. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, don't try that shit. That's right. That's I'm, right, I'm giving baby. a real sincere message. That's right. That's right. I, I, yeah, I feel yeah, like yeah. don't none of these. I feel like don't like. <laughs> see, that's a real like you gotta person. come get that shit don't from baby. Like y'all know, like you know, like y'all know. I ain't even you know, y'all know. But I say both of them. So let's drink. Yeah, yeah, let's drink. And for the record, you want one with Glow. You what? Yeah, yeah, one for one, sure. a, a record. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. He want yeah, a record yeah, yeah. with Glow. I thought he wanted yeah. to ask the question. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Sure, sure. Come on, gotta relax. Uh, this is your favorite. Major or... Hey man, that's an interesting perspective, man. It's good to see the baby growing up, man, and realizing, man, the streets is overrated, and man, it's time to be smooth and get this money. The baby described how he's no longer interested in any sort of controversy. Them days of baiting me in the BS, over with, he said. I ain't got nothing for you but good music and entertainment. Controversy and violence then cost me enough. Drop your thoughts in the comment section. Stay tuned to Rap Geek. Like, share, and subscribe for all the trending news and more. And thanks for tuning in. And we'll catch you on the next video.